So many accolades here at Stanford. Three-time national champs, the most recent in 2021 as the Utah Utes are in town. Their starters look like this. Izzy Palmer gets the starting off, her fourth on the season. She started in the last game in the win against Arizona. And then you've got Gianna Neepkins, Kennedy McQueen in the guard spot. So with Jenna Johnson and Alyssa Peely, the Stanford Cardinal, Agnes Emanopu gets the start. This will be her fourth on the season. Solana Lapolo, Haley Jones, and Hannah Jump in the other guard spots to go with Cameron Brink. Making it to the second round. And hoping to pull off something this program's never done, a win here at Maples. And the Cardinals get the tip. Chris Blunt, Charlie Turner throwing with you. Glad you'd be with us. Kicking off the weekend with a top 10 matchup. That's not so bad, huh, Charlie? No, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> Shot from Brink, no good. And Utah will push. Palmer guarded by Emma Nopu. Good spacing by the Utes. Neepkins on the drive, gets the finger roll, and Utah scores first. Interesting, Lapolo is on Neepkins. A little bit of a size disadvantage for her because Neepkins is so good at edging people out and shooting over the top. Yeah, Gianna Neepkins at 5'11", Lapolo at 5'7". And trying to work it inside to Brink, and it's taken away by Utah. He's trying to push. Peely, she can hit it. That time, no good. Long rebound batted around, and Jenna Johnson there. Second chance by the Utes. Up up four nothing. And that's the area that Utah has to get better. Rebounding on both sides of the floor. See if Cardinal can get their offense going. There's Haley Jones. Kind of talked about really trying to pound it inside. I was kind of surprised to see Brink on the perimeter shot, but there she is, cleaning up the weak side That's right, Imanoku on the miss, but that second chance effort by Cameron Brink. Utah's only defeated the Cardinal once. It was in the 2019 season. They've never beaten them here at Maples. High Archer and through. You can't give her that open look. Seven two lead for the Utes. And the no poo looking for her shot rattles around and no good. The shot's not falling right now for the Cardinal. I like her aggressiveness though, because this is a problem. This is why they've got to catch the shoot and keep people honest. And that was halfway down, really. Brink will take a seat. So Tara already looking to her bench. Kiki Erie often has come in, 44 and wide, but the and one for Utah. They've been aggressive so far. And she was just a little bit late. I mean, it's pretty hard to guard Peely one-on-one. -on -one. So Erie often immediately coming in. Didn't do her work early, Krista. No, she did not. They don't lead. And that one. Shooters touch. And not as much pressure on Utah as there has been as of late. Absolutely, especially in Maples Pavilion. Yeah, that's that's not gonna work against Cameron Brink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she said, send that back to <laughs> LA Fitness or something, I don't know. Oh, and the polo down. Okay. Indy Navarre on in her place, a number 12 in white for the Cardinal. Job using the screen. When she doesn't make at least one three, they don't win. And so she's already got five points tonight. And not quite the right angle for Neepkins. Brink, high to low, banks it in good. Boy, the versatility for Cameron Brink. And I think she kind of read that Reese was in and they pulled her out a little bit because she knew she could drive by her. Utes working around Kelsey Reese and the travel call. Great rip drive. I mean, Reese was even stepped down and still couldn't really deal with the long layup by Cameron Brink. Kick outside, Navarre. 
off the mark. Extra effort, though. The second chance opportunities, and Jump makes him pay. You talked about it. Tara Vanderveer wanting the effort. Lufkin's trying to split the D. Shot clock winding down, and now the takeaway. Great strip by India Navarre. You saw Cameron Brink just lingering there, not really guarding Kelsey Reese on the perimeter. Jones guarded by Neepkins. Good patience by the Cardinal. Shot clock. Down to three. And a whistle with two on the clock. And you can look. This is not their Pac-12 ranking. This is their national ranking offensively. Truly one of the best offensive teams in the nation. Break will take her second free throw here. Got new 20 seconds for Utah. Out of bounds offense. Lots of screens going to Peely. Peely Jones is actually usually really good. So three minutes left in the first quarter, all tied up. And Utah staying right with it. And so crucial for them to come out and start like this, Charlie, to make sure they're right in it from the get-go. I think this is going to be a barn burner. <laughs> I think we're going to be a barn burner. Back and forth. But just one point for her, and that's so uncharacteristic. In, in both of their losses, and Tara was extremely fired up about her needing to do more, and yep. she is. Oh, oh, but Izzy Palmer, you know, the junior guard out of Australia got the start in the last game, the win against number 14 at the time, Arizona. Uh, she had had a few starts prior to that and gives up a little more length at the guard spot, not being able to go under. Now, this is a team that has outside shooters, this Utah team. And Tara Vanderbilt talked with us about that today at shoot-around, saying, you know, this is a team, if they can get going, the defense has to be able to guard the three. And there's Haley Jones in that mid-range jumper. You know, her streak of double-doubles is broken in the USC game. And right. I think it's very important for her and for Stanford that she gets going today. Yeah, Jones, eight points at USC. Now Stanford, as Utah was trying to work it inside to Alyssa Peely. Peely with nine points of the 17 Utah points. Oh, uh, back cut, Newman, and one for Hannah Jump. That is so tough to defend. So, you know, the scatter report on Hannah Jump is she's going to shoot a three or she is going to cut back door. So, you know, Lynn Roberts right now is extremely frustrated with Izzy Palmer. I'm putting a little wrap on the right leg of Alyssa Peely. A little adds a little bit to that artwork on the leg. Yeah, it yeah, sure does. does. Oh, the missed free throw, a rarity for Hannah Jump. 80% free thrower. Doesn't get the three-point play, but she's got 12 points. What a start for her. Palmer kicks it out. McQueen gets herself open and sticks it. Kennedy McQueen. What a beautiful sidestep. And Hannah just actually kind of fell down. And that's Stanford at their best. Right back at you, running off the make. This is the pace they did not have last weekend. Yeah, there's really no time to celebrate, is there? But both teams looking to be aggressive. That layup won't go, though, for Palmer. Here's our track meet. Imanopu, up and good. There's no room for that. With 20 seconds left here in this first quarter, it's been a good one. And help D dropping down. That's great effort defensively. 14.9 on the game clock for the first quarter. Oh, wow. Inbound to Peely, left corner, just a little flat. And a long rebound to Palmer. But yeah, you really don't want to foul at the end of the shot clock. Make people make shots, especially as the shot clock's running down. Both free throws good for Izzy Palmer. Four points, and it's a two-point Stanford lead. Can they add to it before this quarter ends? They won't. And a nice look, pace though. First the quarter. did a nice job getting in that paint touch. Nice kick. So a solid first quarter for both teams, Charlie. And the second quarter's underway. 
really have been getting their big three going, which is really important. It certainly is. They try to work it in again. And India Navarre, the 5'10 freshman, one of eight McDonald's All-Americans on this Stanford team. Neepkins, High Archer, batted around. Peely, the and one. Oh, no, wave it off. Okay, she's in the charge circle, but it, it goes from where they already are. So because she caught it in um, that restricted area, that actually can be um, an offensive foul. Oh, excellent uh, to explain that because, yeah, I'm sure a lot of people were saying, wait a minute, she yeah, she's in the restricted inside circle. that restricted yeah. area. As Brink was right there and trying to stick with it. She is smothered by red jerseys. This is a young team in a lot of spots, and she said, but the players from a season ago, you know, Anna Wilson, the Hull sisters, Lacey and Lexi. The Hulls are four-year starters and the motor of this program. Most of the guards are on this Stanford yeah. Cardinal team. Yep. Five freshmen added to this roster. And some sophomores and other players that hadn't gotten starting time because they were playing behind those players. Inside, outside, and... Pressure from Neepkin. She's going to get whistled with the personal. Snavar up top. Running some point for the Cardinal. Help D trying to drop down Brink, but not enough to stop her. Palmer. Shot clock down to four. Oh, excellent D. The rotation was there for Stanford, the takeaway. Jones, pretty. Utah just forcing into their post a little bit, kind of uncharacteristic, and again, not what Lynn Roberts wants. Wants a little bit more ball movement. Even right. that three was contested. Um, they're really just settling right now. Credit Stanford's defense, though. Absolutely, they forced seven turns. They've gotten probably one of their main three-point shooters. No, they're not. And, and Tara talked about it. we got to redefine ourselves a little bit and, and tweak some things offensively. They just, they have a rivalry. Yeah. They have great games. And it's always a matchup thing in basketball. But Colorado matches up well with Stanford. Yeah, you got that right. The shot missed at the other end. Haley Jones on the spin move, no good. And Cameron Brink keeps it alive for Stanford. Oh. Defense able to get back into position. Inesh Vieta on for the Utes, two in red. Kelsey Reese trying to draw the charge. No whistle play on. Brink adds to her totals. Having a conversation with our officials tonight. McCole Murray, Tyler Trimble, and Cheryl Blue are officiating trio. Is that shot no good? Another O board, though, for Utah. McQueen, she hit one earlier. Can't get that one. Hannah Jump almost got beat on that same sidestep. Oh, beautiful pass from Navarre to Brink. And Tara says she's she's as much the motor of the team as anybody right yeah. now. Yeah, they're really looking for that. It's been extended out now to a double-digit Cardinal lead. Jones. And trying to draw the charge. And Will. So the defense sliding over. It's going to go against Jones. Crowd does not agree, but they'll go the other way. That's a good crowd for you. <laughs> so Brooke Dimitri, 21 in white for the Cardinal, comes on. Wow. And more fresh legs coming on. This is Janaya Harrell, redshirt freshman out of Sacramento. And she got a few minutes in the SC game, but just kind of was solid. Jump with some length against Vieta, skips it across. Brink, triple teamed, kicks it out, and a good rebound, good positioning by Jenna Johnson. What they've been doing the second quarter is just getting a little more ball movement. Haley Jones back on. As the first free throw goes for Jenna Johnson. Started every single game. Feels a lot more manageable if you're Utah. And Jones trying to take advantage of her height. Brink found her, but the layup won't drop. Great execution and just such better ball movement by the Cardinal today than last Sunday at USC. Oh, and work.
looking at inside. Neepkins on the attack. She, uh, you never, ever, ever let somebody refuse the screen, Krista. And nine points for Neepkins and an 8-0 run for Utah. Gets him right back in this. Brink, a little fake. Takes it in further. Shake and bake. And just took it right out of the air. Oh, great deep oh. sail by Pele. Oh, my gosh. Uses her body once she gets that deep in the pain. Adding to her totals. Jones. And that's what she she wasn't really getting those looks. So she got some layups, but they were tough contested ones. That's her sweet spot right there. To extend their lead before halftime. Oh, and trying to take it in, but Ariel too aggressive. Good positioning once again. The charge. Just tough hard nose. He's got to be at least 6'3". Three. three seconds. Can the Utes cut into the deficit? Palmer, Starbucks. Oh. Always got to be able to find something, right, Charlie? There has <laughs> to be something. You can't be I completely I was just surprised thrilled. she didn't talk about it. But, you know, they did play really well in the first half. Yep. They certainly did. A little bit of a slow start. I thought Utah got out to a great start. But then the oh. Cardinal got right back in. Sorry, they about, I was going to say they about made their total from their USC game in the first half. So I know Tara's very happy about that. Yeah, that's a great point. Shot no good. Utah going to try to chip into the deficit. Quick crossover from McQueen. Peely helped D coming over, and she looks one way. And I mean, who were you coming out on? You know, because they were both just going for the ball, right? They definitely were. I think I think Utah's got to switch that screen. They both hop, uh, Hannah and Haley are killing them that with that little mid jumper off that low on ball screens. Quick passing by the Utes. Peely high post sticks it. And the jump asking for the screen. Help D coming down. They don't rotate over. Great extra pass. And it's Palmer. Utah looking to push as Brink. Brink steps off and Krechtel comes back. Comes Great on. back screen. That's on Hannah Jump. She's got to switch that. And communication by Utah. And there's Jump with the movement. The curl. Shot no good. Peely. Trying to create on the baseline. Prechtel with the block from behind. Carvel didn't have the numbers. Wow. What a Euro. Nice. We call that blood drill one-on-one -on -one in the open court. That's a fantastic take. And Utah. One on three. Navarre makes a play out of this. Now this is the McDonald's All-American. Everybody's been waiting waiting to see. And she's getting a great opportunity. Lapolo obviously out for the rest of the game with a boot on her ankle, on her foot. And at the other end, though, Alyssa Peely gets herself to the free throw line. A transfer from USC last season. Beating uh, most of the people down the floor to earn those two free throws. And now the Cardinal trying to push with good transition D by the Utes. I think those are the possessions that really are frustrating Tara right now. Obviously, Haley Jones, just an amazing free. Yeah, definitely so. That's an area that they're going to have to clean up. Difference makers when you start to play ranked teams. Every possession matters. Neepins with the crossover. Help D was there as she tries to split him in. Such a huge fan of, of how crafty and how versatile Gianna Neepins is. And she's deceptively athletic. Lynn Roberts and I were talking about that at halftime. Back to a freshman of the year by the coaches last season for Pac-12 honors. Well earned. Brink. Help D dropping down. Jones is there. Reese isn't giving up that drive this half. Uh, you've always got a chance to bump your, your, your ranking up in this conference. Half the teams or four or five teams with those strong nets and it's hurting. You could beat we actually beat teams. They're just working on taking away the three-point game. And they've done a great job of that so far. Viscana back on for the Cardinal. Neepkins drives it up. Can't get it. And multiple Cardinal players there trying to 
Corral will rebound. And it's going to go to Stanford. Oh, it came back in and reversed it. There were multiple players and options for that to go out of bounds. Neepkins is definitely saying, my bad. Just kind of a forced drive there. She's still not doing a great job of reading the light in this game. You're going to displace Cameron Brink a little bit and hope that they don't call it every time because you just can't let her get that deep position. Great yeah. back screen. Oh, and the and one. But it goes against Palmer. So right here, the queen is actually responsible for that. She's guarding the inbounder. The inbounder's job is not to give up any passes in the paint. With just a little over four minutes remaining in the third. Nice to see Utah just work the ball here and get a really good possession. A quick spin move and good. Or just Andy ISO. Brink calling for it inside. Why not with Reese and the three personals, but the shot short. Good defense by Kelsey Reese. Kick out to Neepkin. She knew it. That one was high. Arkin and straight through. She's not going to miss that wide open look. Great inside action by Utah in transition. They cut the deficit to three. Oh, and an offensive foul. Things going Utah's way right now. This is a little shake and bake. Spin move. Just took Harriel's space. Wide open three on the kick out. Neepkins, kick out, Palmer, too much on it, good box out by Haley Jones, and she's able to track it down. Got a little push there, the crowd didn't like it. Mm -hmm. And Jones takes it in for the Utes. This was your scouting report for yeah. Haley Jones. You know, they've, they've denied her paint touches, she hasn't really got too many post-ups, and obviously top offensive rebounder. Yeah, Lynn Roberts loving her game. Just a scrappy, smart decision maker. Peely's taken a beating tonight. <laughs> she has. She's been hit in the face several times. Oh, How she... many 20 point a game yeah. players are, are doing that around the country, Krista? That's about as late as it comes. <laughs> <laughs> it sure was. Great play. We try to teach him to pick it up and not control it with the, with the, with the dribble, but. And Jones. A little stagnant on offense here for Utah. I think they're really maybe looking a little too hard at Peely. The fun jump for good. Deja Young. Wow, got she has given them a boost off the bench. Deja Young, the transfer from UT Martin a couple seasons ago. And that's a program that was generally at the top of their conference, a winning, winning team. Jones is in the high screen. Peely comes out and the shot clock down to three. I mean, I don't know why you're sucked up that much. You got to be stepping down and just keeping Haley Jones in front of you. <laughs> it's both free throws. Both, both teams are hitting their free throws now. A little extra focus as this game has gotten closer. And the third quarter winding down. Crossover by Palmer. To Neepkins, too much. And that's going to do it for the third quarter of this one. One more quarter. These two teams tied in the top spot, 5-1 and one in conference play, and a travel call against Young will send it the other direction. That's unlucky for Utah. There's a lot of traveling that goes on in games, and you never really know. Which ones are going to call? So, I'm not sure what just happened here, but they gave the ball back to Utah. So, must have, maybe they stopped play before the travel with the clock. Air ball by Deji Young. Here comes Stanford in transition. Baribi out there for 
The Cardinal, Navarre's gotten significant minutes as well. Brink tries to work a high to low and does. Believe me with the reverse for the Cardinal, but five freshmen. Still a lot of new Neepkins. Halfway down, just didn't quite fall. Yeah, that one was close. It was a good look. Seven point Cardinal lead. The winner of this one will move up to the top spot. Brink moving out to the three ball. And you know, that's just, as a coach on the scatter report, you're saying let her have the three, let her have the three, but eventually Cameron Brink is going to start knocking some of those down. Yep, she's in. Look at Brink out there setting screens for her freshman, rebounding the pass. That's how you have your teammates back. Yeah, there's not much she's not doing as she takes that one in with some contact. Cameron Brink adding the mid-range floater with contact, yes. Back up to a double-digit lead. Peely trying to change that, and she did free throws. That's the fun thing about Peely. Almost every time after she has kind of a breakdown or something doesn't work out, and that is not good for Stanford. As Peely gets them both. Believe me. Trying to get some space. Prechtel. Good effort on the O boards. Another chance. That'll get you some minutes. That'll get you some minutes, I would think. Absolutely. And, you know, Stanford was still at, going in the fourth quarter, down one on the board. So this is something they're still not really doing what they normally do on the boards. Oh, Jones, spin move. Get yourself right in there. And Haley Jones loves that kind of play. It's the inbound pass. And that's, that's her go to. 10 points, Stanford lead. Big possession for Utah here. Help D down on Peely. She'll set a screen instead, and the defense by jump. Twelve turns for Utah. And now a turnover by the Cardinal. Palmer with the crossover, gets it to go. That was Tim Hardaway quick. Tyler Vanderbeer probably hoping others can get it done as Jones slicing around and wow. 77% free throw shooting team. First in almost every offensive category. Yeah. He's really been dominant. Jenna Johnson for the three. Oh, wow. Peely just comes out of nowhere. With a lot of time left. With a lot of time left, yeah. Be an advantage for Utah. Big possession here for Utah. Neepkins from behind the three and then takes it in, lays it up good. Great poise. You have Fran Malili coming out on a hard closeout. You you might want to fake and go around her. <laughs> the, the dunk master. Gets it back nice under the double off. digits. Neepkins has 16 now. Jones. Just a little over two minutes left in the game. These teams tied 5-1 and one in conference play. And reach in on the hook D by Belivi. It's all about how you go about it as Belivi got the arm down. Gets into their press here off the make. Oh. One for two for Peely. Oh, the thing is, you got to press earlier now because you can advance when it gets under one minute. So it really negates your ability to get your, you know, have your be in your aggressive full court press the last minute of the game. Get knocked off. She yeah, has. She's been. She's going to have quite the ice bath tonight. A little bit of anything they, they're willing to help her with. Yeah, it's been a hard fought game and probably a little bit more Stanford's style in terms of, you know, Tar really wanted to go get in the paint, get her big three going. And uh, they, they did a very good job in transition defense. Hands are active. Neepkins behind the screen. Oh. And that's just kind of been the story of the day, Krista, right? Just yeah. in and out, in and out. 
to 15% below what we normally shoot. Mm -hmm. We would come to shoot around. We would shoot amazing. Yeah, and it's the crowd. It's a it's a very tough environment. Well, you would know. As we have been Pac-10 slash Pac-12 coaches. Yeah. Is it, and it, is it a different vibe coming back as, as a commentator now and not as a coach going against your alma mater? It is. I feel a little more just at home and a little welcome. So not the enemy. That's the way we like it. And so it looks like Stanford's going to take care of this one. They will move to 6-1 and one in conference play. Utah will move to 5-2. and two. They'll head over to Cal. They've got a matchup with the Bears on Sunday. We'll have that for you on Pac-12 Network. And Stanford will await Colorado Buffaloes. They, too, have just one loss in conference play. With their win today against Cal. Jones really turned it on in the second half. Oh, and finally, a three to fall for Utah. But it's a little too late. Too little, too late. So Tyra Vanderveer adds to her totals 1,175.